All right, uh, pretty exciting new feature in SigDigger. Um, probably one of my favorite applications. Got a cool name, a cool developer, and now uh, a super cool uh, feature that I can only imagine will get better. Um, normally, I would show how to build everything. Uh, I'll probably ad maybe address that uh, at the towards the end of the video. But uh, so I've already built uh, SigDigger here. I built the development branch. And it's pretty easy if you pull it down and run the build.sh, uh, you'll pretty much be where I'm at. Uh, in this case, I am on the Raspberry Pi here running DragonOS Pi 64. Uh, I did have to do a couple things uh, after building it. Uh, you'll see uh, SIG Utils and Lib Suskin was. Uh, wasn't finding what it needed, so I copied over uh, after I built what needed to be there and got everything linked up. So to take advantage of the new, and hopefully I do this justice, uh, the new features here uh, of remotely sharing a software defined radio with SigDigger, I'm going to run uh, SigDigger here directly. I've got a Pluto SDR, HackRF, and RTL SDR plugged in. And you come in here right now anyways, and um, you set up a profile. So in this case, I got the HackRF1 here. Uh, let's just take this sample rate up a little bit. Uh, let me see. We'll just leave it at 97 megahertz. We'll save that as uh, HackRF. Okay, that should be good. Let's create another profile. I hadn't tested the Pluto SDR, but it should be fine. Let's see, we'll put it on uh, just so we can know. Set up a little different. Now, where you've set up the profile is where it's going to start at, um, frequency wise, as well as sample rate size. The frequency will be able to change, sample rate will be uh, locked to whatever you initially set it as. Let's see, we'll save this as. Uh, Pluto SDR, and then last but not least, let's try the uh, put this on 100 megahertz. We got RTL SDR. We'll go ahead and leave it at. I'll just take it to there, and we'll save as RTL SDR. Okay. We should have three profiles created. Now in the Pi, I'm going to close out uh, SigDigger. And let's go over to our lib folder. Nope. We'll go over to the bin folder. And we'll take a look at the options here. We want to... So we got a hacker. Okay, so we've got our profiles. Let's start up our dev serve uh, if equals 192.168.0.149 is the IP address of this pi right now. We'll run this. We can see the port numbers here, and this is going to be important. So the port numbers, 2, 3, and 4, 2 is a hacker F, 3, Pluto SDR, 4, RTL SDR. So there's four profiles. Okay, and let's see. So now, if we hop over to our, let's see, in this case, it's a laptop running DragonOS Focal. It's uh, also uh, built the SIG digger uh, actually as of yesterday there's been some changes already um, so this uh, so SIG digger is in Dragon OS Focal uh, but that's not the most up-to-date version so I built this one again um, just kind of for now until I get it installed so we're gonna call it directly in the deploy route after you build with the script that I tried to point out there And 
So let's see here. We're going to try and connect. So uh, like I said, 2 should be the hacker F. So if we look over here, we see the login was successful. We're sharing the hacker F. Uh, and it really just depends. Uh, so there's some work being done to get the option, uh, the correct antenna settings uh, sent over and some of the other things. Let's see if I can get this here. So now we're looking at the hacker F. We've got our four on the sample rate that we sent. And we can change the frequency of the radio on the remote end. And let's see, I don't have a, I have a cellular style antenna on there. monitor on with the Pi, or sorry, that shouldn't be, uh, actually I'm not going to be able to record the audio, let's see, Okay, so uh, obviously the laptop is not sitting far away here, but it is on the network uh, from me. I'm remotely, well, whatever, VNC connected to it so that I can record, but the laptop is plugged into the network. The Pi is um, elsewhere on the network. That's the HackRF um, streaming over, and um, my understanding is everything all the processing everything is being done on the remote end and so in this case a sig digger uh, is like the i don't know like the shell i guess that is uh, controlling that so uh, m much easier to use than the last video i showed where we were kind of setting up uh, uh, the other application and using a, uh, the remote software defined radio so uh, this just right in the GUI, I'm pretty much able to control uh, most everything to include changing the demodulator, which we can see if we pop back over. Uh, it's got the opening here of the audio inspector. All right, and so say we're done looking at the HackRF. Uh, I think, and I hadn't tried the Pluto yet, this should be the Pluto. So now. Well, I'm definitely using the Pluto. I don't know where maybe something in here. Uh, we got the sample right there. I have modified this Pluto SDR uh, to unlock the the uh, expanded frequency ranges. So there's the Pluto, and then let's take a look at RTL SDR. So now we've got the RTO SDR, and you can see that you know 100 that I set there. Let's 
So that is the RTL SDR. And just out of curiosity, if we think we can run two instances, well probably even more than that. I don't know what the Pi can handle. So let's come back here and we'll go to, let's see, two for the HackRF. And so now we've got the RTL SDR over here. And we've got the hacker F here. Let's turn this down a second. So there's two, there's at least two at the same time, hack RF, full control over it, I guess I could turn this down, uh, full control minus change in the sample rate of the hack RF at the same time as the RTL SDR, you know, looking at two different, well, I can change it to be more drastic than that, uh, let's see. third instance so four two okay we need the Pluto I mean this might be pushing it for the hacker F but oh, let's see Anyways, I know it can do uh, a multiple at the same time. Um, this is uh, really kind of early uh, on. I only expect it to get better. Uh, I think this is a, a really cool um, feature. So, all right, so let's see. Let's shut it down. So you kind of see how to uh, at least configure it and set it up. If you uh, want to... Uh, build it on uh, Dragon OS Focal for the uh, main GUI portion. It just uh, get clone uh, down the rep uh, repository, and once you have it cloned down, you could check out the develop branch, which I already have done, and change into scripts and you'd run build.sh just like that and you would finish with a, a deploy root. You've got the sig digger right there that you would run just like I did a second ago. 
over on the pie. Uh, same, same, same thing basically. Um, you uh, change to the uh, uh, develop branch, and run the script. You'd uh, get the deploy root. You'd have a look in the bin. You'd probably do an LDD of the um, this here, and you're going to notice that there's no linkage, or at least for me, on the uh, actually sorry uh, these two here. But just note where it's at: user local lib on both cases, and then all I did was uh, in the lib folder those uh, files that it's um, saying is not there. You can just, or at least I did, might not be the most preferred way, but uh, I copied, uh, I copied them, where you know, copied the ones that uh, that it references, and then just put it in the user, uh, whatever it was, user local lib, and then um, then you were able to uh, do what I did, which was in the bin, and then you'll be running the correct uh, version here and everything will be linked up. All right, so I'll come back and do uh, a better uh, video on this. I just think that this is, uh, well, I'm super excited and uh, I've already tested it out uh, outside of the local network and that uh, it works really well. All right, thanks.